welcome to episode three of Art Sofa. My name is Helena Westra. I'm Zachary Dobbins. I'm Ethan Chan. And today we are recording our episode at the Quint Warehouse in Bayho. Surrounded by a field of boxes and an art stored away. There's a ladder in the corner, a little kitchen. A lot of tools, a lot of art. Great ambiance. Fluorescent lights. No heat. No, not yet. We had to turn it off because it got a little loud. It's so <laughs> it's cold in cold San Diego. Yeah, it's really cold. <laughs> so cold in San Diego in Freezing February. Sixty degrees. Yeah, I think I think we're at fifty now. Actually, wow, fifty something. Yeah. Brr. Today we are going to be doing a performance art tier list. We're going to be referencing a slideshow put together by our one and only Ethan Chan. Hi. And before we get into the nitty gritty of some extreme performance art, let's do a little catch up. Zach, what have you been up to? Um, I've been preparing for a little show that I'm going to have at Quint yeah. uh, in La Jolla. I'm having a show at the Museum of Space showcasing some of my fire extinguisher sculptures I've been working on. I, I, put toge- <laughs> I put together a little installation of them that has a little religious altar to fire extinguishers at the end. And, d- d- describe the extinguishers. So, yeah, each one is fabricated so that yeah, I, I got a bunch of regular extinguishers and I kind of cut them, chopped them, and then welded them back together and made them look like they came out of the factory with multiple ends on them or weird right angles bent into them or, um, I don't know, just a bunch of weird stuff like that. And, and they're going to kind of be ushering in this finale of a fire extinguisher that's this really nice stainless steel one that has all these etched... Uh, or it has etched hands on it for you to kind of pray to it and feel the warmth that the the extinguisher will actually provide. So, ah, that's going to be a good show. That's yeah, going to be fun. That's opening February twenty eighth, twenty fifth, twenty fifth is the opening. Six to eight. Yes. Yeah. Six to eight p.m. is the reception. Um, I'm really excited to set up that show. Um, I get to be the, uh be the uh, liaison uh for once. It's the first time doing it, but Zach's a good friend, and it's going to be a lot of fun to set up because they're already ready to just be mounted to the wall. Pretty yeah, much, right? Zach's a pro. I, I yeah I, I try and make it easy because I can't help but like make my work like function in reality even I wish I I wish I couldn't like I wish I could just conceptualize things that don't work in real life and then like have to figure it out after but everything has to like I don't feel like that's where I sometimes limit my work where I'm like this has to be constrained and then I always try and break free from that so that's one of those things that I'm always going to be trying to work away from but it's in who I am, so I can't no, have to fun, leave though. with it's it. Fun. Yeah, it's, it's a fun good to balance. give a lot to it. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. I, if you guys are in the area, you should definitely check it out. We will be totally. installing very soon. Um, I believe the fourteenth to the sixteenth, you and I have to install that show, and it has to be up. Nice. Yeah. No, I'm ready. Woo! <laughs> Ethan, what about you? Um, I'm currently in between shows right now. I just finished setting up for a small solo exhibition at the Oceanside Museum of Art. That was really fun, and. The show is moving uh, this summer to Art Produce Gallery in North Park, so I'm trying to expand the series of work. But with different it. stuff, right? Or is it some stuff. of it, some of it going to be the same? Or is it going to uh, be? I'm going to try really, really hard with the budget mm-hmm. that I have right now. Uh, the stipend from Art Produce was much smaller, but I do mm-hmm. have a lot mm-hmm. of leftover because Oceanside's budget was so big for the show. Nice. So. I, I think it'll work out nicely. Hopefully, I can come out with seven new. When suits. are you going to publish the analytics for what percentage of your salary goes to Sauce Packet? I don't. I'm too afraid. <laughs> explain <laughs> what too, the work. Explain I'm to the people afraid. what what your work actually looks All like. All right. Yeah. So, sorry. So, so they I understand I, why you yeah. spend so much on Sauce Packets. <laughs> it's um the the work currently up at Oceanside right now is um made out of Sauce Packets and cellophane tape, which I've been working with for the last year. Um, it's the first big series of work that um has gotten a decent amount of uh shows. And stuff for me, um, which has been nice. But I started making suits or costumes out of sauce packets that I just uh, collected and tape them together to make something that people could wear. And this latest show, which is up in Oceanside right now, is based off of all of the outfits that my really good friends wear. So I'm focusing on like the connection between like fast food consumerist culture and like um how people kind of individualize themselves with like apparel and material goods and trying to bring like all of my good friends to the gallery wall, I think, is a fun thing. Yeah. So currently seven suits, seven of my good friends, um, their costumes made out of sauce packets and photographs of a performance where they each wore them mm-hmm. are up at Oceanside right now. And then for Art Produce, I'm working on hopefully at least five more friends, five more costumes. How... Oh, maybe I'll make a cut this time. <laughs> oh, no. No, Zach, Zach, Zach's is currently being worked on right yeah. now. How it's much longer there. is the Oceanside show up till? The Oceanside show is up until, I believe, April 30th. Um, yeah, January to April. So, and you're having a reception 
like a mid show reception. Oh yeah, mid show reception. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they are the weird. masters yeah, of scheduling. I have no <laughs> idea why that is. It's so weird. And that's in March, right? Like March sixteenth, I think. March sixteenth. Yeah, um, six to eight. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. So show up there too. Really great work. I know that they're having some other fun exhibitions installed in the museum there right now too. I'm not sure exactly what, but I've heard good things. So it should be fun. Yeah. I have a Landmarks of Art show going up in the Miracosta Community College gallery space, the Kruglak Gallery, which is on like the bottom floor of their student services building, I want to say. But it's um, my ceramics teacher and mentor, Yoshimi Hayashi. Love, ha- is, love that man. Yeah, he's a great nice dude. Guy. How could you not? He yeah. had a launch for his Landmarks of Art program, which is a nonprofit um, where he acquired like 150 acres of land oh in Anzabrego. It was awesome. Quick Sorry. little it bit was of land. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. I, There's like I'm I'm pissed I didn't get to go to that. It was. It I think was it good. was. It, I had a bread and salt opening from the yeah. beginning of my residencies, but Yoshi's like, you got to come, and I was like, I know, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> there'll there'll be more goodness yeah. out there, so that'll be a fun show. We're gonna have, I think, like. It's a group show, and I think there's five or six artists, and I have a floor piece that I'm going to be installing, which I sort of, the pit fire piece that I did oh, at the cool. launch yeah. is so, going to be shown there on yeah. the yeah, floor. Yeah, so Helena did this big performance piece, um, kind of land art, kind of performance art. Um, it was a big deal in uh, the desert, in the landmarks of art. And um, so that's moving to the gallery? That's moving to the gallery nice. floor. So now Very it's nice. going to be like the the artifacts and the oh, remnants sick. of what happened out there. How do you plan to there. install it? Is it just... So I have the f- whole floor space yeah. available for me to use. And Yoshi was like, if you want to do anything experimental, like now's the time. Yeah, so no, you should. I don't, don't just put dirt on the ground. Yeah, be elaborate, be elaborate. So I've been thinking. Yeah, I've been right. thinking. We'll Good. talk. Okay. We'll talk after this. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love it. I, 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 oh, I love it when people take like it, because it does function in a different way than totally. it does out there. It but does. And like instead of just like replicating what it did out in, you know, nature or whatever, like push it. Push it to where like maybe it, how it would function in here in yeah. comparison Do something to new there. With it. it's, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, I think that's like a missed opportunity that a lot of people like don't see when when they're like moving something to it. They're just like, Oh, we're just putting it in a new yeah. place. It's like, no, that new place has so much yeah. in it. You know, I, so yeah. I like it when artists with. make like wh- whatever they're doing like exist only like in that space specifically. Cause yeah. it, it's nice to have like the unique experience. Because conceptually to it's it. totally different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and if you're trying to recreate it, you gotta go to pretty far lengths to recreate. And then I think if yeah. you go so far well, it'll maybe, never be what it was. Yeah, but I think I, what could be kind of fun, I, I don't know, this is my another hypothetical installation that I would probably never happen, but like to, to try and go so far but yet never reach it, but like you're like, I don't know, you paint the whole walls, you do everything you can <laughs> to make it that, and but it's like... But it, it's still not. It, yeah, but yeah. knowing that it'll never be that, like conceptually, if you win after that, well, I think that could fun. be fun. I don't know. Well, but, I don't, you, we'll see, we'll chat. Big, we'll chat. That's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Hard no. All right, so should we get into this extreme performance art? Yeah, so Ethan set up a, a, a another little slideshow for us of all of the extreme performance artists that, um, I don't know, mostly he came up with, but I added a few that I thought were pretty fun that were, I guess, maybe not so extreme, maybe a little... <laughs> I, I, I used it, I, I used it, the word extreme really liberally, but not uh, everything I added was extreme. It started out as that, but then I started finding like other performance art that wasn't necessarily like uh, controversial or yeah. anything too violent or something like that, but they were still interesting to yeah. talk about. So it is extreme slash interesting performance art is, is what I would say. And I'm I, excited to talk about Shia LaBeouf. Oh, yeah. Just I love that one. I, I love Shia LaBeouf <laughs> as a performance artist. He does some fun ideas for art. Um, I sent it over to you guys. Zach added a few. Um, I think I have some in here that I assumed Helena would like already. Yeah, the Joseph Boys one. I'm like, I know I'm you're ready to a big chat fan about. of the Coyote. Yeah. And we're going to be uh, ranking them on a tier list. So not not like we did in our first episode where it's underrated, overrated, but like where they sit yes. in the in our vision of the yes. canon. Th- these of have actual art. rankings. So we have I, I have a I have a tier list here too. That, and we'll um, we'll post this online in our link tree most likely. We okay, have yeah. one for the first episode. Or sorry, sorry, sorry. Two. Second episode. Yes. Second episode. We have a first episode. We just will never. It's burned to a crisp. Um, <laughs> Posted. Uh, um. Yeah, we do have an actual tier list. It's uh from S to F. Um, S being the highest, F being the worst. There's an E Ooh. in it, which I don't understand. I don't know what the E is for, but extra bad. Extra bad. <laughs> a for amazing. A for amazing. S for, yes. for so amazing. So good. C for 
kind of but with a C. Kind of, kind with of a C. bad. Kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Yeah. Let's get into it. The first one on our list is Chris Burden's 1971 piece titled "Shoot." Oh, I got it. Um, we're all. I mean, I'm. We're okay, all, sorry, I, all, I, I, I'm, I don't I'm know so what you stand on that, Chris Burden, Helena, but I'm I know so happy Ethan that and I, we, Zach is the other guy. You guys are big fans. <laughs> who loves just, Chris we're just Burden boy boys, and yeah. we can't help ourselves. But it's good. It, Chris Burden is a really, it, in my head, the reason um, when I was starting undergrad and I like first switched over to the art major, Chris Burden was like one of those guys, one of those artists who I thought was doing really, really interesting things that made me. Um, think that art could be so much more than what I initially thought and that's 100%. why I wanted that's to be an artist. That's why I, yeah no I had the exact same path of I think he was one of the most influential ones into like realizing the, uh, the vastness yeah. of sculpture and installation art rather than because I had always done painting and, and drawing and stuff as a kid but not until I learned about right? the, Chris yeah. Burden that I knew that I'm like this is what I yeah, want to that do. Yeah that stuff you know, is That's cool. how I'm going to yeah. express when myself. When you first yeah. see Chris Burden's art and see like how many different kinds of like things he does it's just really really awesome. And, and yeah and his it's kind of gradation between performance and uh, uh yeah, you and know sculpture large installation. sculptural installation yeah. works and how they weirdly combine and yet somehow yeah. function on their he own. He does a yeah. lot. He does it all. Um but shoot is probably well that's the that's the big piece that Chris Burden is on art history textbooks for mm-hmm. like everybody knows chris burden because of shoot i and, literally um, just had a class and a teacher talked about this piece like, oh nice getting they have you to <laughs> you're getting contemporary they have to it, it is textbook so the um artist um announces the event of himself getting shot for the exhibition like he already had the slot to be in the exhibition um and he just announced to everybody that like um he was going to get shot and at the opening when he did the performance he had his friend fire um a rifle i believe um, which was supposed to graze his arm, uh, he misfired and um, it shot through his arm, and that's pretty much the gist of the performance. Yeah, it was a it was a small caliber rifle, but a rifle nonetheless. I think yeah, it was a still a rifle. That yeah. still, yeah, it went pretty much through his arm. Through I, I would say what a two fifths or I don't know, I, I think <laughs> it was a fifth flesh, of the so, yeah, yeah. Just still no bone. No, yeah. nothing I too did serious. not know that it, he misfired. He did. He got <laughs> really nervous because um, his it, friend was a marksman, right? Yeah, that's he was why he brought him. That's in. why he. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was supposed to just. Um, uh, graze him, but um, <laughs> it turned out to be a flesh wound, which yeah. is funny. And they went through a, a lot of other wound? stuff after that because they had to file an official police report because you know <laughs> people heard gunshots, etc. Yeah, um, it was a weird one. But where do you guys sit on this one? S. Yes, I, I think do it's too. such an influential piece it for is. performance art. It 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 and uh, it, but even though he he does consider it sculpture in many ways because I think wasn't his goal to make like the fastest sculpture, you know, and and, and but in the minds of you know. The average person, because I'm sure you can make something that goes much faster than a bullet, but in the eye, eyes of, especially an American, you know, it what's faster than a speeding bullet? Yeah, like There's a gunshot much. is you know, like, it's, like that. Yeah, that's and you it, can't yeah. you can't comprehend the real speed of it, even yeah. though you know there are things much faster. But it, it's such a relating to real life speed, you know. Yeah. That you know it's faster than a car, but you know maybe slower than light, you yeah. know. <laughs> but how but how much you don't know. Right. I I think that shoot is is s is s tier for sure. Also because. It's one of those pieces where Chris. It first showcases that Chris Burden like does like a very short performance, which he does a lot of, and then after that he displays the relics. Um, and that's what you see in the art. Like yeah. you just you know the story, but whenever you go to the galleries, you only get to see the objects or like the photograph of what occurred in the performance. Yeah, which I think is really cool about his work. I feel like it's really cutting edge and punk. Like yeah. still even looking at the pieces yeah. from 1971. But then he goes and does the opposite of it after. I mean, I know we're just talking about this piece, but then he goes and does the pieces where he lives in the gallery for yeah. you know months on months on end. Or... Oh, it's that one's coming. Yeah, yeah that okay. one's coming. <laughs> right, let's yeah, go to the yeah, next yeah. one. Well, well, we have a we have a good amount of burden to talk about. I couldn't help myself, but S tier for that one. Um, Zhang Huan. I'm biased. Um, I know you love. Tell this me piece. a little bit more about this piece. I know it, but I Zhang Huan is is um one of if not my favorite um artist. I, I think he's really really great. Um, I think all uh. All that that entire group of of Chinese artists in the '90s working with performance art when mm-hmm. it first like emerged there are are really good because they were doing like incredible stuff pushing the boundaries of art, especially for at the time um when China had like so much rules and imposition on like nudity and stuff like that. So what all of these Chinese artists were trying to do was like push every single envelope against the government, and that was really cool um because they focused a lot conceptually on like the beauty or the poetry of like these one liner pieces um. 12 meters squared, specifically Zhang Huan, um, he slathers his body in like fish oil and honey, like all this sticky food stuff. And then he sits in like a really um, gross, um, decrepit public toilet 
for an hour and lets like all of the insects like cover his body and like crawl into his mouth and his ears and his nose. And um and he endures that for an hour basically. And then wow. he walks into I believe he finishes off the piece by walking into a river or a pond. Mm-hmm. But um the endurance was the main part of that piece that was important. And the reason why I like it so much is because all of these Chinese citizens were trying to prove something to like the higher authority. Yeah. And this piece is basically just like here is like what one person alone can endure. Here's what yeah. one person can take. And it's just like the power of like um a human like enduring so much mm-hmm. uncomfort and pain. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely a interesting piece, especially within the context of mm-hmm. Chinese history and especially in the nineties where it was just as it and when these things could be documented, you know, where they yeah. couldn't be in the past where they just kind of would either just happen, you know, and, and a lot of things showing up on film and the atrocities that would show up on film. And, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a great piece. I don't know. I guess for me personally, it wasn't, it doesn't have that much of a influence in my practice or anything like, but I guess it probably trickles its way down through a lot of other performance artists. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, what, what would you put it at? Cause I, I, I would probably I would put, put it, it at S. A. Okay. But I, that's just because maybe I'm not so familiar with the extent of or the ex- extent of his practice. Yeah, got you, got you. He it's mostly just um he used to do a lot of performance in the '90s, and that's what got him big. Yeah. Now he does painting and like sculpture mm. and stuff, mm. which personally I don't think are as interesting. I love all his '90s work. His '90s yeah. work, like the performance and the photographs that exist that came out of it, are really really beautiful. Yeah. I think. Um, but again, I'm I'm incredibly biased. Where would you put it, Helena? I feel like he's top tier. Also, whether S or A, I can't necessarily decide. I would but really I like feel to like put it's this in S. Super <laughs> like visceral and it's super gnarly. But yeah, yeah. It's, but it's a I, gross piece. Like considering the politics of the Chinese government at the time, which I'm honestly I'm not super familiar with, but the restrictions and from what I've heard that this is like intense and. I don't know. It's disgusting. Yeah. yeah <laughs> frankly. Yeah. But like in a way that's so like it's it feels like like a a fuck you and like I'm an individual yeah. in a yeah. way that's yeah. really cool. Which was a lot of that kind of art coming yeah. out of the nineties in China. I think it's really awesome. Um all right, I guess we're all settling for A at the very least. I, with I this think one. Oh, good yeah, it's hard, but I I think I'm gonna say A. In my heart it's S, but I I'm 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 fine putting it in Ethan A. Ethan will put every one of these in S, I think. <laughs> 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 if, I, if I had my way, most oh, of these would be up there. I just remembered an artist that maybe we'll include later on because I just thought of one that might be pretty good. Oh yeah, no, we'll we'll talk after and yeah. like from what else comes to mind, you guys write it down, please, because I I'm sure there's a lot of really great performance art that yeah. I did not include yeah, yeah. that just flew over my head. The next one is Janine and Tony. Um, nah. Nah. Yeah. So. 1992. It is another 90s piece, which I didn't know. I thought this came out much later in her, uh, in her career, but it did not. So there's two um like little marble uh pedestals i guess and um on one sits a 600 pound cube of chocolate and the other 600 pound cube of uh lard and um the artist came in like once a day for the duration uh-huh. of the exhibition and took a bite out of each um, uh-huh. and you got to like if you kept going to the exhibition you got to see her like slowly change like because cause lard is terrible for you and yeah so is mm-hmm. chocolate like you got to see like acne slowly grow on her face or her to become kind of sluggish and yeah. stuff. And that's what the whole piece was about. I think it's a, a really, I, th- I think all these are probably going to be fascinating pieces. I'm by all means, if I put them anywhere below a or S, that doesn't mean that they're not good. Cause this is fast. I mean, I love, I, I the will be surprised if one. any of these go below C because yeah. they are all interesting, I think. But I would say this is probably, I don't know. I might even say C to B, but really for this one, I, I would say probably B. I think it's great, but, I mean, I don't know. It's this is such a hard thing to do because I love the piece itself, but I don't know how. No, I get it. Yeah, the, no, no. The grand with, with, this is things. all with what we know yeah. about the artist and the piece. So, so stand by your decision. And I I, think, I would put this at B personally. I, I think Janine Antoni has much better performances than this. I just wanted to really include. This the, I think I think I'm gonna go C. Okay. I don't know. C. I'm wanna? I'm gonna give her an A. I love this yeah. piece. I feel like slay. <laughs> <laughs> a for slay. That's cool. Totally. Right? Yeah. And I I for me the first time I saw this. I was like, whoa, like, this no, was like, so I thought cool. this was yeah. really cool. I love the, like, the the themes of consumption and, like, the bodily change. And mm-hmm. I didn't honestly did not know that she came in once a day. That's what was so to, cool about it, because you got to see so her slowly So then it's also a time piece, yeah. too, which is really cool. Okay, I thought I'll, I'll she was just munching, and then yeah. she just displayed it. Right? But the fact that she was going in every day yeah, there was an interactive makes it even more 
in- exciting and enticing for me. So I would totally give it an A. Okay. I'm, All right. I like it a lot. All right. I, I think, convince me. I think a B. B. Okay. I I, I guess we'll do in, in this case majority rules. Is that okay with everybody? <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but how many other artists? How many artists have used like food in the before? Has there any artist artist like prominent artist used food in their work before her? Like to that extent to where it is a performative food Paul thing. McCarthy, but it was the same era, like in the yeah, 90s. Paul yeah. McCarthy did a lot Wasn't with Wasn't he food. later or I think it around was, the same time? I think it was around the same time. Yeah, Paul McCarthy. I feel like this was definitely like the beginning of But this that. one feels, I like this better than Paul McCarthy's piece. So. Really? I, <laughs> I, I love so. that Paul McCarthy yeah. piece. It's not here, unfortunately, on this list. I don't have Paul McCarthy. Um, yeah, Janine and Tony did... A good amount with food. Yeah, food. yeah. There's a couple of like chocolate pieces, I believe. Um, all right. I guess moving on. Um, uh, I'm gonna butcher this. I'm so sorry. I really like this artist. I don't know how to pronounce this name properly enough. Um, uh, Piotr. Piotr. Peter. I don't know. I'm so sorry. Peter yeah. Pav Pavlensky. Peter Pavlensky is how I always say it. Fixation. Um, he's a Russian artist. Russian artist. Um, contemporary. Yeah, he's much newer. I guess late mm-hmm. 2010s, early 2010s. Um, this is his most famous piece, I believe. This is the one that got the most notoriety. So what he did was he sat, um, in front of Maz- uh, Maz- uh, Lenin's mausoleum, excuse me, um, naked and nailed his testicles to the ground. Gee. Oh, shit. Yeah, a really painful piece. Um, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> so he nailed his, he, he put a nail Whoa. through his scrotum and just sat there. Um, Damn. and it was supposed to be, um, to, uh, bring attention to the corruption in the Russian government and, um, his personal qualms yeah. with Russian society in today's day and age. Extremeness, it's an S, but I think- It's shock art, yeah. Yeah, it is very shock art. And I think that's maybe also why I would say it's probably a C for me. I don't know. Oh, how, wait, how do you mean? I don't know. I think, I mean, I, uh, it's a great, uh, political piece. It's a great, you know, protest oriented piece. Um, but I don't know how much in like the large scale of performance art that it does for me. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I think that's where I sit with, with it at a C. Um, I mean, it's fascinating. It's cool. <laughs> there is, a, there is a lot of, there's so much shock art in the yeah. world that are like, mm-hmm. like very simply done pieces. Like it's just one action or like one thing being done. So it, it is hard to like consider all of that. Like not yeah. all of them can be at the top. So yeah. I, I get where you're coming from. So, um, where would you guys put this one, Zach? Like I said, I think I'm going to go with a C. Okay, I, I C. Helena, what It's giving C for me a little really? bit, too. But okay. I think maybe because I resonate less with it also. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, th- there's, a lot of, there's a lot of artists doing a lot of different things as protest in the contemporary art um, sense um, in different parts of the world, too. Uh, I, I, w- I was going to give it a B, but we do majority rules here. Yeah. So we'll put that one at a C. I feel like Sweet. shock art is valuable and like to a certain degree, but the more I feel like it's been, the longer it's been around, the less I enjoy seeing people hurt themselves. That's, that's <laughs> fair. You can only watch so many artists yeah. torture themselves physically. Yeah. There's value there, but at the same time, I'm like, oh. Well, good thing we're Ouch. moving on to um, animal abuse. How many other people's testicles have been injured uh, before 2013? Probably a lot. <laughs> a lot. For, I mean, in the name I, of I art, assume a lot. there's been a lot of, Too many. Been a lot of testicles. There's a lot of self-harm of, in, yeah. in the name of art that exists. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, this next one doesn't harm humans, but, but it does, um, it does bring out a lot of questionable things done to animals. Mm. Um, do you guys know this piece? It's, um. No, I don't. I, I'm not familiar. Yes, I know okay. of it, yes. but give me a little bit more. So Exposition 1 by, uh, Guillermo Vargas Jimenez. Um. From 2007. From 2007. Thank you. Uh, it, it was, uh, so in the exhibition, he, what he did was he found a stray dog, uh-huh. like, in his neighborhood, and he moved the dog to the gallery. That's uh-huh. pretty much all it was. Um, but this thing, um, this thing got a lot of notoriety. Like so many people who went to see the exhibition complained about it because they thought it was like animal abuse. But um, I believe that was the whole point of this performance piece because he wanted to call out like uh, the hypocrisy of people because yeah. the dog was on the streets long before then. Like he, he, he wasn't being fed or yeah. anything like that. But then when they started seeing the dog like in the gallery, they they wanted like somebody to blame yeah, like, about it <laughs> now that it's been moved into a a, a space that's supposed to be safe it's yeah. a problem yeah. yeah yeah and it brings into that whole yeah that confrontation yeah. of you know coming into a space and and you know not expecting it yeah. no i think this is i think it's great i think it transfers it away from a lot of it like helena was saying a lot of it is just like um 
kind of self harm. At some point, there was a, a big period of performance art that's like, yeah, how can I hurt myself? How can someone else hurt me? Yeah, you know. And then now it like transfers it to that it is a bigger conversation than just like you and you know, human. You know, being human, which is what we're all so obsessed with. Um, and then I'm gonna say C or B. Okay, I, yeah. and I, I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go C. You would go C. Okay, I, I would go B with this one. It, it's so it's so interesting to like he like. He called it so well, like the hypocrisy and like the, mm-hmm. the yeah. people, because so many people complained about this. And you're like, you were free to like pet the dog, to feed the dog, to give the dog water and stuff. And nobody was doing it when it yeah. was on the streets and nobody did it when it was in the gallery. They just complained about it. All right. I'm back up to a B. There we go. Yeah. I'm on a B <laughs> too, especially Everybody knowing B? that people had like, were able to, yeah. like if they wanted to bring the dog yeah. food and, and the conversation. It while it was in the gallery. Yeah. Yeah. It brought out a lot of great conversation. Awesome. Quick one. B tier. Next, we're moving on to another really great um, Chinese artist. Um, uh, this Te is Ching a great Se. piece. Yes, Amazing the piece. time clock. Um, okay, great. So we all know about this one. Um, it was performed for a whole year, and um, it was just the artist punching in time cards at the same time every day and committing to that um, to clock in uh, on the hour. Wasn't there a photo as well that went with it? Like, was there, there were a couple of photos that went with it. He he took a photo every he, single time. Yeah, that's what I was saying. In. It was yeah. like the the time card and then the photo. Yeah. I think S tier. This is amazing, this is a good amazing one, right? show of time and the human experience. Like all of that in one thing, and like such a a way that like you wouldn't ever be able to comprehend unless someone sat there and did it. I right know, here. yeah. the 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 idea of like the process of repetition yeah. being like the art is is really cool, but like committing to it for a year, which is something that um say does a lot in his art. He he like commits to long periods of time, and it wasn't just. I did, I took a, you know, I, I stamped our time clocked in every day. It was like every hour, which like he couldn't even sleep half the time, know, right? Like, wasn't that a part of it? Was yeah, it like it's, he, it's insane. He would, he would, you know, have to, oh, doing that for a Can whole year. Can you imagine? Year. Yeah. I mean, it, it sparked <laughs> the, I don't know, what, remember the time when uh, the guy who like took a photo every day of his life and like, po- ev- like posted on Instagram oh, and yeah. everyone's like, oh my God, this is so amazing to see how you <laughs> changed. And then it's like this and is like this, this torment of having to do it by the hour yeah. you know every hour yeah like the and work experience yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, his it, outfit too like the blue collar yeah he like dressed up and everything yeah for it. yeah it's like true performance and i feel like it's bringing it's raising questions about the work cycle and, and labor mm-hmm. as a whole and how it relates to the human condition like it's yeah. so much it's not just like oh you know human suffering and you know whatever but then it's like oh human suffering but with work as well yeah. and then like and then you get to watch the whole thing you know mm-hmm. over time and you get to watch it in like a one minute span or whenever however yeah. fast the time yeah. lapse is and so like it also brings a viewer into it in a way where you just kind of get to watch this person exist for a year but like <laughs> without having to go through i don't know it's it's fascinating i think it brings up a lot of conversation and has like continued to make me think about my works and how they relate to time, time. and yeah, yeah. It's a it's a very good timepiece. Yeah, it's very, aesthetically, very it's cool I know, too. It's like beautiful, the, the, the photographs look the way fantastic. that the the time clock is mounted on the wall, and he's got this yeah. punch card, yeah. and it's like so it's simplistic, and it's just it adds to the the repetition of it. Uh, I mean. On the last day, like that that was going to be like the year mark. What he did was he moved everything to the gallery for an exhibition, mm-hmm. and like people crowded around him as he like punched it in for the last That's time great. ever. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. Big fan. Yeah, awesome. S tier. So next is uh, Yoko Ono, Yoko. Um, the cut piece, uh, 1964. 1964. That is the, the I, I believe that's the the biggest piece that like gets Yoko Ono in art history textbooks and stuff, or at least that's the that was my first exposure to her as an artist. Um, so she basically sits on stage, um, dressed in a suit, and she puts a pair of scissors in front of her, and the audience can come like one by one and take the scissors and cut off a piece of yeah. her clothing and it, it's a, it's up to their discretion how much or from which part do they cut off yeah um i don't know i think it's a i think it's a really important piece i mean it's 1964 yeah 1964 yeah it's old. early it's yeah. old yeah cutting edge one could very say. it is it's a very cool a piece bit. <laughs> Scissors. Boo. Oh, 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 sorry. I, <laughs> Boo. <laughs> I think cut it, i think cut piece is s tier frankly i mean yeah because just because of how prolific and ahead of her time she was with this one. And I mean, performance art was kind of like being birthed at yeah. this time. And she was one of the leading people in Figures it. Figures and performing. Yeah. yeah. I also think it's interesting that like a lot of the times, like just generally, like w- w- when when people come to see or experience art, it's like 
it's almost always like what can like viewers get out from the artist's point of view or like what can we take away from the artist but this one is like also equally as much like what yoko ono takes Mm -hmm. out of like the viewers because like it's up to their discretion and some viewers are certainly more like um daring and like um uh hold no bars again against like the fact that this piece can be um pretty dangerous in certain ways yeah i mean the fact that it's performance but it's also interactive too and inviting the viewers to partake in it and become part of the performance when did Ambramovic do her piece which one? The one where she invited the viewers to, to do... hurt her. Yeah, 1974. With... So ten years later. After. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it definitely sets the stage for that. And for a lot of those. For yeah. A lot. Of, yeah. I mean, I think obviously, I think just based off its impact alone, S tier probably. Yeah. But, I would say so. And too. it's also a fascinating piece. So putting it up. Cool beat. <laughs> Gilbert and George. Kill. <laughs> I love Gilbert and George. Some of the most extreme oh. artists I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I Two at this point dudes. at this point I ran out of extreme stuff. I also like rescrambled the list, yeah. so it's uh we take turns with like extreme and goofy. Yeah, some comic relief. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and Gilbert and George um are an artist couple and duo uh living in the UK. They've been making art forever. Um, and uh, this was one of their so they're most famous for the singing sculptures, you know, where they paint their self, uh, both of them paint themselves bronze yeah. and like sing songs in front yeah. of people, which spawned the whole public like park performance thing. Um, but um, this is another variation of that same series, I guess is how I would put it. Um, Bend It, which is a dancing sculpture. And what they did <laughs> was um, they were in a studio and they video <laughs> recorded themselves dancing to the song Bend It, like the, the hit pop uh-huh. um, song uh, in the 60s. Um, and that's it. That's basically all the piece was. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're bending it. Yeah, they sure. just quite literally bend it. They just dance to the whole song. These, t- I mean, anytime I see this duo, I always think of Wood and Harrison. Do you know about their work? I know them by name. I don't well, I'll, I'll, we'll have much. to bring it up at another time, but okay. their work is fascinating. It's just like a, another duo that just, but they do a lot of like simple acts you know, I think that's how they started. And then it kind of, they incorporated sculpture into their simple acts and like weird motion. Mm -hmm. And then they started doing video. I mean, they're really cool. And I think they're still making work today. Uh, I think they did a whole takeover of like, Times Square, where all of their videos were playing at the same time on in Times Square. Oh, cool. That's overload. That's perfect for Times Square. Yeah. Um, (laughs) uh, Gilbert and George. I don't know. You're not a big fan? Nah, I mean, I guess maybe not this, not this piece. Not this piece. I, I like their, I don't really like their, they do a lot of like prints and like, yeah. uh, paintings and stuff. I, I like their performance exclusively. I think their performance pieces are really nice. Um, I think I'll give this a B or a C. Okay. I, I would give this one a B. It, it's very interesting to see how like innocent and goofy it is, but they also get like really, it looks like they get really physically and sexually like intimate with each other in yeah. some of these dance moves. And I think that's where like the interesting conversation exists for this piece specifically. Yeah. I would give it at least a B. I say C. Okay. That's my, yeah, that's my I, final vote. I love the whimsicality of it and exactly. like the, the focus on the body and the fact that they're wearing business suits and they're like boogieing on this like washed out white background. Really silly. And I think it's definitely pushing the boundary of what you could consider performance art to be performance art by taking it away. That's like a lot sunnier and brighter, but there's yeah. still, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like it. Awesome. Okay. So we'll, we'll put that at C. I have been outvoted. The next one, Helena, you could start us off with this one. You know a lot about this piece. I Joseph know Boys. enough. Joseph Boys, I like America and America likes me from 1974. So Joseph Boys flew to New York it was New York, right? Yeah. And he never touched the ground. They literally picked him up in a stretcher <laughs> outside of the airport and then they, they like caddied him over to the gallery space, spit him out on the floor, and then he spent three consecutive days, eight hours a day, living with a living a live coyote, a wild animal. And he brought his like this felt shawl and a cane with him. And I know that he had done um felt works before. So I like how cohesive that is, material. Yeah, yeah he uses felt a lot. He goes um, back to it. And over the course of the three days, like, I think on the first day, the coyote was like, like, it's a feral animal. So it was like attacking him and biting at the wool. And then it would go through these, through the course of the three days, these ups and downs of like where the coyote would be like more ornery and like fighting and biting and times. And like, by the end, I think they were like chilling with each other, like in the corner. (laughs) Yeah. Like they kind of became friends, not necessarily friends, but. They were tolerating each other more. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool because he brought with him like 
like certain items that would like like the felt thing is a big symbol for boys practice about like safety and like warmth and, and stuff like that but like that like kind of cloaked him and um i i believe he liked the idea of like wearing it as a as a coat to make him look like a shepherd that went along with the cane mm -hmm. but like throughout the three days he tried like doing the same gestures like with the cane and stuff to like try and like communicate with the coyote i mean how much of this do you believe? It's Joseph Boyce. It's Joseph Boyce. Boys. That's true. All. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I, I mean, I know I, there was like, <laughs> I, I think I remember talking about it in school and people were like, well, did that even happen? Like, did like he even like, maybe he did, to, but I know it's all about his own mysticism. And, yeah. And, he's and, big on yeah. the, the whole mystery and lying Making aspect. your own, yeah. Yeah. Your own story. But, but as the idea, like the idea of like him being trapped, never setting foot in America and being trapped with a coyote. And whether or not it happened for three consecutive days or if it even happened for like, three hours <laughs> the fact that he trapped his himself in a room with a coyote yeah. is i think it's cool i don't I'd say know, I, a. I give it a also i, would give I love this a. piece a. but definitely yeah. Yeah. Give it an a. It's, it's hard to give boys pieces not an a it's they're really good works where i want to know like where they got the coyote i want to know there's what a lot eating. there's like, a lot of unanswered questions for that piece i tried to do some it's research, questionable for I, sure yeah i don't know oh uh, this next one i'm excited about so zach knows this one very well I love, we're, we're back, we're, we're bringing it, and back I think we're going to finish yeah, it off full circle. For, for this part of the episode on Chris Burden again. It's getting long. <laughs> yeah. um, white light, white heat. Oh, God. Uh, 1975. So he, he constructed a, a panel in the top of a gallery, or the corner uh, yeah, the of a gallery, corner, and kind yeah. of, uh, not, not like a square panel or anything, it's like kind of stretches across it's it. A, it's a, a triangular uh, panel to fit exactly in the corner, and, and it's, uh, it's, got, it's, the per it's built perfectly. God, for him. Uh, it's built perfectly for him to conceal his entire body from every part of the room. Yeah. So you can never I like see that there him. also are, like, in, we're looking at the photo that's on the, the, um, the slideshow that we'll have posted. Uh, there are gallery lights up there, but they're, like, all the ones up there are turned <laughs> <They're> off. off. <laughs> yeah. And so it's, like, just for him to be just out of view of the viewer. And I think from any angle in the gallery, you wouldn't be able to you see him. You wouldn't be able to trace his presence yeah. in the gallery. But you were told that he was there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were told that he was there and that he would be staying there for the entire duration of exactly. the exhibition. And he would never move, never leave. And, um... And and that's how he describes it because Chris Burson always, always um describes like at the performances after they've already been done when they yeah. go into museums and galleries. Um, he gives a description of what happened, and his description for this is, uh, I constructed a panel, uh, and for the entire duration of the exhibition, concealed myself completely from anybody, um, from every point in the room, and during the piece, I did not eat, talk, or come down. Yeah. So. He's such a little trickster. He's so funny. <laughs> he's a little devious. Yeah. He he's is. a little He's a little clown. <laughs> I like Chris Burton. I, I love it. I mean, I love this piece. I think it's really interesting to kind of inhabit the a gallery space and then inhabit a space that's like meant to be you come in and you know you look at you the leave. stuff on the wall yeah. and then you leave, but you know that there's someone like in there, but you can't see them, but you're told it and it kind yeah. of almost uh, it works. I don't know. I think maybe it's just because we just talked about Joseph Boys, but like that weird mysticism is like, do you even believe it? Do you even know that like he's up this there? This one sits better, right? Yeah. 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 It's like, well, I mean, I think he's up there and I've been told he's been up there, but yeah. I've never <laughs> seen him. You know, I I think it's a great piece, but I think it's not S tier. No, I know it's, that a, much. it's an A. I, I think it's I A. I think it's an A. Sorry. But I, I, we're biased. We I are. It's B. Good at, it's, you'd give it a B. Exactly why? Not, I, I don't know if I could articulate I, it into words, but it's just. It, I could be swayed it's because whatever. I know I know whatever I'm saying is going to be I'm probably one ranking above what it should be because I know with I'm burden bias. With yeah. burden? I, I got a little BB in me. <laughs> you know it's <laughs> You know it's uh it, it's hard to say I, I I definitely don't think it's the most interesting Chris Burden piece but it is one of the interesting ones yeah. to talk about yeah. in, in like the grand scheme of It is a great art. piece and I l I do really enjoy the mysticism of it and like how much are we trusting the gallery how much are we trusting the artist to yeah. believe that yeah. he's actually there Yeah I I've been persuaded I I I can settle with you. We'll we'll go B Okay yeah you so you've, you've won us over <laughs> And I think we're going to stop it there we're going to pick this back up actually in our next episode Part 2 Part 2 um yeah i mean we should we have a lot more artists i know we have Ambramovic to talk about um, yeah we're, we're a little less than halfway there's through. there's probably the 18 yeah. different more burden burdens pieces. in there <laughs> i uh, tried i tried really hard to, to <laughs> oh my god i there were 10 burden pieces in here when i started and he then i to, realized uh, it would be to too long I, I deleted back. most of them i'm sorry it doesn't look good for the viewers <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry um but yeah, I think we're going to stop it here. We're going to come back at a later episode, I think the next episode, and mm -hmm. touch on the rest of the artist. 
and we'll go from there. Yeah. Sounds good. Stay tuned for part two. Thank you guys so much for listening. Check us out on our Instagram, Art Sofa Podcast, and you can find our podcast, which is now streaming on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, and I think we're figuring out Google still. Gonna try to break the Google barrier. But <laughs> yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great night. This has been Art Sofa Podcast Episode 3, Extreme Performance Art. Stay tuned for part two. Bye. See you later, guys. Bye. <laughs>